John from Arkansas stopped by. He wanted to say hi. Yeah. Hey, hey, John. How, how's that, um, you know, part, part 90 yet on there? I'm not sure. Okay, hey, everybody. Yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about this Harbor Freight uh, compressor. This compressor here is the one that's, uh, hang on a second. It's the Central Pneumatic, um, let me see if there's any other numbers on this thing. Well, I couldn't find anything else, but this is the one that's 125 PSI. And um, if you have one of these, you know what it is. So what happened here, I got it apart. Let me tell you what I'm doing here. This thing uh, would not start, particularly when uh, there was still some pressure in the tank. Like for instance, it goes to 125 PSI on the gauges. I've only had this for about three years. I still got the plastic on these things. I always took care of it. Um, I changed and flushed the fluid in here, the oil, and I also uh, have the best synthetic oil I could put in here. But what happened is that um, when it goes to 125 and it drops down to 90, it should turn back on. What happens is that uh, it won't start. You know, it'll just go, rrr, rrr, it won't go. And, um, you know, sometimes it'll blow a fuse because it's pulling too much current. Sometimes it blows the reset thing. You have to reset it. But it doesn't work. But it, it'll, it will start if you drain all the air out of it and then have zero pressure in it. So th there's, there's a couple reasons that I could do it. But let me tell you what I did to fix it. And I'm going to put it all together and I can show you this thing here this capacitor this is 140 microfarad and uh, I thought well you know who knows maybe this capacitor is uh, sort of on the way out a little bit you know and it won't won't start the motor there's not enough uh, capacitance in here anymore like it's kinda out of spec or something so I got another capacitor. Let me show you that. I got this one here from Amazon. It's um, HQRP 150 microfarad. A little bit more, but it doesn't really matter. It's uh, plus minus 10 percent. It's close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. Made by our friends in China. And this guy's very good reviews on uh, Amazon. So I got one. It was nine ninety five. It's the HQRP CD sixty FPX. So I temporarily, you know, screwed it onto the appropriate wires, and some again, it fixed it. Fixed the problem. Actually, it starts better from cold, and uh, starts all the time. With uh, tried it a couple of times, and it's working when there is air pressure in the tank and the compressor will start up because you, know, you know if you think about it using some deductive reasoning um, this compressor doesn't seem tight and um, you know I probably only have about 20 hours worth of use on this thing so the, the logical thing would be to kind of look at the capacitor see if there's like a problem with it so what I'm going to do is put it all back together again and give it another try. I picked this stuff off on Amazon.com too. Got a pretty good price on it. It was uh, like something like $12 off on this. And uh, it's a package of heat shrink. It's got a nice case. It has hinges on it. Different colors, different sizes. So, um... I'm going to put some heat shrink on these once I put it together. I mean, actually, before I put it together, I'm going to put some heat shrink on these and heat shrink some uh, appropriate size on there to make it look really cool. Yeah, basically, you, you unscrew the old one and um, you got two of these, these lugs on, so you slip your heat shrink on first. 
get this good and tight, you know, I use two hands. I'm just holding the camera because I ran out of hands. I use two hands and you, you just get these pretty tight. And um, basically uh, do the same with the other one here. You heat shrink it on. It doesn't matter what lead goes on what. As long as you have the two whites together and then the yellow goes by itself. Okay? But the way they made this capacitor, it's... I guess bi-directional I guess they call it and um, it doesn't matter you can put the two whites on that one or the two whites on that one but as long as you got the two whites on that one and the yellow on that one you should be A-OK -okay. oh I just wanted to mention real quick here that um, you know um, this worked for me I already tested it but I had to get the heat shrink to put on, so I took it apart again and figured I'll show everybody. But I just wanted to say that this works for me. I'm not saying for sure that it's going to fix your problem with uh, your compressor that you got from Harbor Freight. You know, I know that this will fix the problem on this, but sometimes, you know, your compressor could be binding or something. Or, or, you know, this is good, but sometimes your compressor could be binding, or maybe it's not releasing the pressure pr appropriately, you know, in the head of the compressor, you know, or maybe sometimes, maybe there's something wrong with this valve here, like if it won't start from cold, this is like a pressure release valve, like when it's cold, it's supposed to release the pressure, you know, in the head so the thing can start up. So I'm just saying that, um, you know, in this case, it is the capacitor, and I wanted to point that out. Okay, so, uh, and be careful, you know, because uh, you want to get the wiring right, like I just said. And also, um, you know, like, I guess I could call this a disclaimer, because uh, you don't want to electrocute yourself. Okay, you know, you got to be careful with this stuff, and I'm not an expert. And this video is made for, uh, what did I say, like, entertainment purposes only. I'm curious to see if a hair dryer will shrink the heat shrink. Curious, I got a heat gun somewhere, but I can't find it. So I stole this from the wife. Let's see if it works. Okay, well, the Jerry Redding 2 Travel 1500 is not the right tool to use. It actually worked pretty good here to heat shrink the heat shrink. So, um, I don't know. You have to hold it pretty close, but it worked. You got to kind of work around like this and like that. But look at it. It did heat shrink, and it heat shrunk good enough. Now you may ask, what are these things for? Well, I got me these O-rings here on Amazon also. Amazon. Sterling Seal and Supply Company. These are uh, one and a half inch inner diameter. And this is the part number. 0612 that's the whole part number that they have for Sterling Seal and Supply Incorporated Amazon I'm going to use two of these O-rings here to put around this capacitor and that's going to help prevent shocks not electrical shocks but shocks of the compressor vibration from hopefully not destroying this cap so I'm gonna I'll show you in a second okay so I just roll these onto the cap kinda of get a neat there 
these are little shock absorbers, see? And, you know, now I'm going to a tie wrap. Get another look there. But now I'm going to tie wrap this down, because that's how the old one was. The old one was tie wrap down. They had thin O-rings, but I got thicker ones to use. And the O-rings were too big, actually, for this new cap, which is a little smaller. So, that's going to help absorb the shocks. Actually, it works pretty good. Okay, this is a completed repair. Put the tie wrap around like the old ones were. I got new tie wraps. I got, um, I got these from Summit, but you get these at Home Depot. I just got them from Summit because um, I ordered some other stuff. But, um, see I put a tie wrap here. This thing is was like isolated somewhat with these um, with these washers here. O-rings I should say. And uh, O-rings kind of cushion it a little bit. I tie wrap this these cables here because I don't want them to hit the fan. So I'll give it a try. Okay here goes nothing. It's going to take a while, so I'll shut off the camera. But I want to tell you, it starts better when it's cold. I could, I could tell that. It starts a lot faster. RPMs come up a lot faster. I'm standing back because you don't want to be anywhere near that fan. That fan will take your fingers right off. Well, I took it outside because the cap just exploded at the terminal. Why did it explode? I have no idea. Because this is 250 volts, and that's what I got. And the cap is kind of hot. So that shouldn't be hot. But it exploded all right. That cap is pretty hot. Why? Why, we must ask. Okay, this is the old one. The old one says CBB65A, 140 microfarad, plus minus 5%, 250 volt, 50, 60 hertz, internally protected. Huh, it's internally protected. That's interesting. I wonder what that means. The new one that I so carefully put on, this is 150 microfarad, plus minus 10%, 250 volt. It's pretty close. Made in China. It doesn't say internally protected. It is a lot smaller. But I reckoned it would last longer than 30 seconds. It did start the it did start it up pretty good though. Actually I used it once before, so let's put let's see, I used it to test it and it worked fine. So that was about a minute. So it lasted for a minute and 30 seconds. Gotta be totally honest here, it lasted for a minute and 30 seconds. That is such a good job at heat shrinking those too. Maybe we should turn it on again and see if it explodes. Nah, I don't know. Contact. Nah, just buzzes. I think the motor likes to have a capacitor to start. Try it again. Nope. Nah. No, I think that cap really, uh, 
really got hot and kind of blew its top there. It blew right out of here. It was it was spewing right out of here. Right out where the terminal is. It was spraying out. I'm probably gonna probably gonna die from that now. So you try to save a couple of bucks. And it sprayed, but I wasn't that close to it. It just smelled. That's why I opened up the garage door here. Yeah, yeah, what a bummer. It's like Roseanne Rosanna Dano said, it's always something. What is the answer to this? Do not buy Harbor Freight. Actually, they don't make these anymore. They're closing these out. They got a new brand called McGraw now. Maybe after Tim McGraw, I hope he doesn't sue him. Or maybe he should sue him. But it's called McGraw Compressors. And it's still kind of kind of toasty there. What a revolting development this is. I think the only thing I could do is put the old cap back on. At least I could start the compressor from zero and let it charge up. I won't be able to restart it. But at least I could get pressure in the thing to use it sort of kind of a little bit. Right? Okay, we had to get down the brass tacks here to figure out what's going on. This here number on here, CBB65A, is not a part number. It's like a uh, model number of capacitor because other companies make that same number. And this, I found out, is made out of metallized polypropylene film. That's what's inside of here. And it's got 10,000 AFCs. I uh, better look that up. See what the hell an AFC is. Well, according to answers.com, uh, AFC is um, number of cycles of life that has the capacitor. The times I recite be energized. Okay. Let me look some more. Okay, according to Google, run capacitors now have an AFC rating, identifying the available fault current, which is the short interrupting the short circuit interrupting capability of the pressure sensitive interrupter in amperes. Most capacitors are rated at 10,000 amps, but 5,000 amps is adequate for motor application. 10,000 amps? That seems like that would uh, knock a horse on his ass. That seems like a lot of amps. Hmm, maybe I should look some more. Now this site here called capacitorindustries.com says CBB65 R equals round motor run capacitor has a low loss self healing metallized polypropylene film dielectric system which are oil filled and are protected by a 10,000 AFC UL safety pressure interrupter. So that says it's a pressure interrupter. <clears throat> so I guess you pick your best definition that you want of what AFC really means. But I did find out this is um, metallized polypropylene film. So let's look at this one. Well this is the box that the one I put on the compressor. This is the box. And 
it says some stuff on here. A run, cap, resser pump. So I meant to say compressor pump. Let's see, it's a run capacitor, so we know it's a run capacitor. It may expose you to chemicals to the state of California. Wait, this product may expose you to chemicals known to the state of California to cause. Okay. Guess they ran out of type or something. But anyway, what I wanted to say is, what did I want to say? I forgot what I wanted to say. No, what I wanted to say is, the cap I put in there, see this doesn't say what it is. Here, I'll show you. See, looking on smile.amazon, this didn't really make me smile. I smiled when I, when I got it, because I got it real fast. But I didn't smile. It has a great rating. Whoops, what happened there? Oh, there it is. See, it's a run capacitor, works with AC, electric motor, start, HVAC, blower, compressor pump. 150 microfarad, CD60. <clears throat> so when you read it, so you can select what value you want. It says here, you got dimensions, tolerance, 200 days warranty. Well, Mine actually lasted for two minutes, but I don't know if that would cover. Okay, um, capacitor, motor, percentage, more product details. Uh, tell you how much it weighs. Model number. Yeah, see, they don't tell you what it's made out of, but I found out. I found out two ways. Someone on, well, I'll show you. Wait a minute. This guy wrote, worked exactly for eight seconds before it erupted in a cloud of hissing smoke. Hey, that's the same thing that happened to mine. This guy said it worked. Uh, there's someone here that said it's an electrolytic uh, capacitor. Let's see if I can find it. Oh yeah, here, see? This appears to be a bipolar electrolytic cap, which it probably is, because it says the Q values are consistent with being a bipolar electrolytic cap. For a polypropylene cap, the Q values would be in the hundreds. Well, I said that was helpful because they don't say what it is, but that's what it is. It's electrolytic. And I knew that, too, because when a thing, like, kind of blew up and was blowing clouds, of, like, hissing water vapor smoke out of it, I kind of knew that wasn't polypropylene film. I reckon there's an electrolytic whatever in there, and... I'm sure it probably wasn't good to breathe in, so that was like a surprise when it blew. So, um, anyway, what can I say? So I'm looking on Amazon for for one of these things. And this one says, almost CBB65A run capacitor, 450 volt, 250 volt AC, 250 volt AC, 140 microfarad. Oh, hey, that's exactly what I need. Um, looking at the picture, it doesn't say anything about AFCs or anything like that. Now let's see what the ratings say. Oh, here are the ratings. Ratings are 3 out of 5. Oh, wait a minute. You got a 51% one star. Let's look at that. Oh. Uh. Do not buy. This is not a proper run capacitor. It is almost a run capacitor. Wait a minute. Oh, shit. That's the name of it. Almost. 
CBV65A by almost no way. It's almost a run capacitor. Capacitor has a non running capacitor that's 140 microfarad, but during operation it's only 131 microfarad, which is outside of the plus minus 5%. It will not start a motor under load, such as a compressor that requires 140 microfarad capacitance. Oh, see, that's what's wrong with my my compressor it won't start when there is a load in there it won't start when there is some pressure in the tank oh see what well, I already figured it was the stupid capacitor which means I gotta put this back in and just use the capacitor from zero pressure to when it kicks off and I have to use it and then drain all the pressure out of the tank and start it up again from zero to make it work. Cause I don't know how I'm gonna get one of these. And this one that's almost a capacitor. It's twenty eight ninety nine. I don't think so. I better save my shekels and um, get like a real compressor. You know, like by like a real name instead of Harbor Freight. Okay, I'll talk to you later, guys. Take it easy. What really ticks me off is I didn't have the camera on when the capacitor blew. And I can't start it because I wanted to show it blowing out, like overheating and ready to explode, and that would have made a good video. Now, this is a lousy video. It's lousy. It's terrible. Oh, man.